Using structures with your Plan 3D drawings can really enhance your model. So let's take a look at how we can add that into the models that we're creating. Uh, before we get started, make sure that you're in the correct workspace by checking out your workspace setting. You can do it either from the drop down up here, make sure you're in 3D piping, or you can go down to the cog right here, little wheel right there, and you can choose your workspace from there. Or you can just go ahead and type in WS setting into your command line, and uh, you can also change your workspace from there. All right. So once you do that, go into your tab that says structure. Structure is where we do all things steel and concrete. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a structural grid to lay out the steel that we want. Okay. If you don't want to choose it here, you can also type in plant steel grid. That'll get you the same thing. So what we do is we give our grid a name and then we put in axis row and platform values. Now, what does that mean? Well, your axis row, you can imagine that just to be your X value and your row value is going to be the same thing as your Y platform value, obviously the Z. OK, you can name those any way you want. I'll leave it as the default for now and then we'll go back and change it in just a bit. You can also change that font size. It's going to be kind of a real world font. So it's going to show up the actual size. It would have to be on the side of some of this uh, equipment here, or your structure, I should say. So let's go ahead and create this and see what comes up. Well, you notice where it dropped it in at right here and uh, Let's go ahead and edit this now so we can kind of compare what we have. You see that the uh, row value started off at about 20 feet on the Y axis and uh, our axis value did start off on the zero. But let's go ahead and change this. So I'm going to push this over a bit. So what I want to do is I want to change this row value to get it over to about 50 feet. And I want to keep these about 20 feet apart from each other. So I'll change this to 70. And I'll change this one to 90. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to change this to uh, 110 feet. Now, notice I didn't use any spaces there. It's kind of imperative. You can't put any spacing in there. And now I'm going to change this axis value to make this a little bit more spacious as well. And I'll stay with the 20 foot increments here. And you can make that as much. Well, we don't want to forget any commas. Those are important. Now you can make it as large as you want, or you can space it out in any increments as you want. It's actually the procedure that's more important here than the actual number value. All right. And we'll go ahead and we'll make our platform value just a little bit more robust as well. We'll start off at a zero ground level. And we'll go up in increments of uh, 15 feet this time. All right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to OK that and see how that turns out. And you'll notice we did push it over a bit. And now we have a little bit bigger structure but we still have uh, I want you to take a look at the naming maybe we could make our names a little bit more descriptive here so let's go ahead and uh, edit those we also don't have enough names to go around so for our uh, ABC here which we're going down our x-axis if you uh, notice that let's go ahead and we'll call this uh, let's just call it x1 x2 X3 and X4. And let's follow that same nomenclature for our Y axis Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. Okay, and make sure you're not doing any spaces in there. And for our platforms, let's just make it something that makes uh, sense. Let's call this level one. Level two. Level three. And level four. Let's go ahead and OK that. And you'll notice 
It's neatly named. We've got our Y's this way. Our X is a corresponding that way. And we have our levels 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's really about all you have to do to make edits to 